Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to A1R Radio. I'm Anna Olson, your host for this segment, Insights into Consciousness. I'm here every single week on Tuesdays, 1.30 East, uh, Pacific Standard Time, 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. And I'm here every single week. So if you'd like to reach me, you can reach me on Anna Olson, intuitive.com or Anna Olson Intuitive on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram at Tiny Medium. Kingdom. So today we're not doing any readings on the air, but I am excited to do a few other things that I think might interest you today on the show. Um, first and foremost, just teaching you in um, as little time as I have today to really exercise and figure out what extrasensory abilities are and how to identify which one you may have and how to use it. So first of all, identifying your um, abilities are something that I can actually absolutely help you with. And I do that with my students all of the time. Um, I'm very familiar with how to identify which extrasensory abilities you have the, that are the strongest because we're all born with something. We just have to figure out what our strengths are. And um, in addition, um, you know, sometimes we, it's just like um, somebody who's born with better eyesight than somebody else. Um, we are also built with and and given certain extrasensory abilities in the same way and in the same concept. So I can help you identify what those are. I can practice with you and I can show you how to use them in everyday life. That said, I'd like to go into uh, how to kind of identify and um, practice one of these today. And it's a very, very simple uh, ability that most of us have, and um, I can't wait to go into that. But first, I'm going to um, look at uh, divine revelation. Now, when we talk about divine revelation, some people believe that only certain people get divine revelation. Um, this can be true because some people are much more in tune or they have a special calling. Um, but I want to look at the fact that we can all practice getting divine revelation and as a matter of fact I think that if somebody tries to tell you that you are not capable of divine revelation that you need to look twice and to really educate yourself on why would only one person get revelation but nobody else would now keep that thought and um, try to imagine how maybe somebody might want to control a populace or gain control over other people so just keep that in mind and um, I'd also like to go into the fact that this week I'm going to be doing a live stream and I'm going to be doing a presentation on uh, the on Facebook and Instagram. I'm going to go live and read people who log on or who ask for a reading. And that will be totally free. So I wanted to give that to my viewers just as a gift for, you know, this getting through this pandemic with me and all of us doing this together as a higher consciousness, a united consciousness. And just to offer that to my watchers and my viewers and uh, to be able to also teach you a little more about your extrasensory abilities later on this week. Um, I also wanted to include that you can, you can watch this show on um, Facebook. It's on uh iHeartRadio, it's on Google Play, it is on I, you know, Apple, it's all over the place. You can even see it on YouTube. Um, there's always a way to figure out how to watch this this show. You just Google it and um, it'll the website, even at askoneradio.com, will give you all of the places where you can watch the show. Um, the easiest place is just on Facebook. I always make these videos public. And um, they're all on A1R. So you can always access any of these shows that way. My show specifically, again, is Insights into Consciousness, A1R, Anna Olson Intuitive. I wanted to go into how we can listen to others and also contribute ourselves. So collectively, when you're in, like, let's say a group or you're on a team at work or you're doing a volunteer project or something like that, Everybody has a role to play in that project, okay? So they all have their input, and everyone has their own unique talents and gifts. So 
I want to kind of one up that, like bring that to the next level. And let's look at synchronicity, revelatory synchronicities. Let's look at how people read. Let's look at how people get divine revelation. First of all, you need to be on that higher frequency of love and above and all the good, feel good vibes and energy where, you know, you just feel so good and peaceful. And that's where you want to be first before you get any sort of divine revelation. And you can always first ask for it. So whatever your deity, whatever, you know, if you're Christian or whatever it is, if you just want to ask the universe, how are you define that? You ask for it first. And I want to reiterate that, yes, readers are incredible, especially one-on-one to read your energy and maybe do medium readings. And I know that I have been able to offer a lot of people quite a bit of healing and relief and insight this way. But I also want to introduce the fact that many of us readers get together. We meet regularly. We are friends. You know, we, we tend to really kind of find each other later in life. and. What's really interesting to me is that we talk to each other. We, we ask each other, what are you feeling lately? What's on your radar? How are, how are things going for you? And what are you getting? How are you, are you anxious lately? Do you feel uh, the state of the world? How's your family? You know, we go through all of this information with each other and we bounce it off each other. The reason why we do this is called mirroring. And the reason why this is very beneficial is because The power of consciousness and thought and revelation is much stronger in groups or um, in circles. You know, when you have more than just one person, it's always better because you're going to amplify that frequency of consciousness and revelation. So the more people you have that are included in a group, kind of like at work or something like that, working on a project, it's similar where we all get together together. We're all focusing on one thing and we all offer what we get with our own unique talents and gifts. Some uh, readers may get, you know, something from the angel realm. Another one might get something from the realm of, um, you know, just basically like higher consciousness or whatever that may be. And as you put it all together into a kind of like a pot, like you're (laughs) like you're making a beautiful recipe um, together, you start to add a little more here and there and start to realize that you're all getting the same information and message but you're putting your own unique twist on it as you know your own person with your own unique talents and personality and it's really amazing to see this happen so I wanted to look at how we can come together mirror each other and to really communicate about what we're getting about the world events about another person you know if um, a group of intuitives does a reading on one person. You can, you can only imagine the amazing power and message that comes through. I've been part of that, and it is a beautiful thing. So I just want to remind everyone, I want to remind you that it's a good time now to really reach your fellow intuitives, your fellow people, even if it's just like exchanging gifts of love or talents of love, like exchanging you know service or coming together and you know going outside if you're worried about quarantining and just like having a a soda like a pop or you know whatever and just talking and coming together making sure that you're not alone and that you're connecting with others it's good for us to get revelation from others and it's good for us to share a revelation to see if that's the same that other people are thinking and i've noticed 100 percent of the time that whatever i'm getting other people are feeling in a way as well or they listen to me and they they realize that oh that's actually that's actually resonating in a lot of truth for me so what we tend to do in these circumstances is we're checking in with others to see if that's something that they can align with or that if if their feedback is that that's accurate and the other part of it is that we are um really just offering our information to add to what they're getting so collectively it it can be very very powerful so i have made some notes today i am super excited you guys because um the next few weeks, we know that tomorrow is going to be the inauguration um, of the next president of the United States, and it's going to be like at 9 a.m. Um, I'm really moved lately with what I'm feeling about this because I do feel like there's a lot of energy going on here. I feel like it's it's going to get very messy in some ways. It's going to feel a little scary. There's going to be some mind-blowing things happening in the next few weeks. 
politically and um, with the state of this, uh, with the United States. Uh, and I really feel like that is always going to have a worldwide globalized effect. We are going to have to move into a new economy. We know that there are things like cryptocurrency and things like that that are already going to be introduced because there are many financial um, higher ups that have been forecasting this entire thing for years. This is not new to many people. And we have those who are prepared and those who are not. That's why I want to go into an extra sensory ability lesson, mini lesson today on the air, where I can just give you a little bit of insight into um, the most basic, it, it really is an ability and it's an instinct that will really help anybody. It will help you to know how to be prepared, know what you're getting intuitively, follow your instinct and follow that flight. Follow that information that you get to be prepared. So my main concern is that you're prepared and that you know now and in the future what you need to do to take care of yourself and your family and those you love. So um, first off, I'm, I'm wearing my um, fitness stuff today. I am wearing um, my fitness jacket. I've got some, some leggings going on here. And um, really, I just wanted to represent that, uh, you know, we need to take care of our bodies first and foremost. Go work out. I'm going to go walking around my neighborhood and I'm going to log it with my, my um, eye watch. And I'm going to make sure that you know, I get in a good amount of calories burned and that I'm eating a lot of vegetables and clean water and um, even using glass instead of plastic and all the things that really, really help me to feel good. Get some sunlight, um, you know, make sure that health is number one right now because our mental health closely relates to our physical health and uh, being out in nature, being connected with plants, um, with our animals, with the sunlight, fresh air, again, you know, just being outside and moving, getting the oxygen to the brain, oxygenating the brain. That's going to be first and foremost, eating really well. And meditation. If you can meditate, there are some really wonderful apps that they have where um, many, they have many free meditations. There are many practitioners that even offer free meditations. Find them, find your favorite, save it and use it. Especially if you're feeling flustered, irritable, uh, kind of cooped up, those are the times to really pay close attention and to be really, really mindful, okay? Now, I want to go over today's extrasensory ability. Um, we know that we have um, senses to protect us by seeing, by feeling, by hearing. Those are the five senses. Now, these extrasensory abilities are things that we ne were never taught in school. So these extrasensory abilities are very human. They are, they are gifted to everybody at birth. And what happens is human beings tend to learn to block or shut them down or not to listen to them. And I'm here to tell you today that they are very real, they're part of our senses, and that it's not evil, it's not bad, and you're not crazy for using it. These are natural, normal human abilities that had been in effect for many years before um, for political gain, people came in and told people to stop it and tried to call them crazy or burn them at the stake or what have you because they wanted full control over the other people. It was about land. It was about personal gain. It was about selfishness. And that just carried on through the generations. So the extrasensory ability to perceive a threat by your gut feeling is what I want to go over today. The gut is the second brain in the body. They also say that the heart is a, a brain. But, you know, generally speaking, even um, your know, medical health, Practitioners will even say that the, the stomach and the gut is the second brain of the body. If that is not in balance, even with probiotics, prebiotics, and a good diet, you're not going to function properly in any sense, meaning it will affect the hormones in your body and your endocrine system. And physiologically, it will cause you to have bad behavior, depression, anger, hostility. If you can imagine your gut controlling how you act and your personality that puts it into perspective what the gut involves and how it affects us 
and how we treat other people and how we even perceive things because it can really alter your reality. These hormones, the hormones are all of behavior. They're everything in the body. So um, let's talk about like if you're going to do a presentation, okay, or a performance and you get butterflies in your stomach. So butterflies are different when we're nervous about an anxiety or fear of something. Um, you know, and that's because it's due to a preceding thought such as I have to go give a lecture in front of over a hundred people in 10 minutes. Okay. This is a preconceived notion and a reaction to a perceived expected threat. Okay. This is largely a social visceral reaction. All right. So when we're talking about that nervous feeling in the gut and butterflies, it is a warning, but it's based more on a social reaction. Um, the gut instinct is a survival mechanism, and it is still visceral, but is felt at a much deeper level and offers insight into a situation or energy felt in your surrounding area. So this is more about picking up on a vibe or something external. The butterflies in your stomach are caused internally by a reaction from your uh, parasympathetic ner nervous system, giving your brain a signal that something's nerve wracking. It's socially, you know, you got to you got to socially be okay here because um, if you fail, you could lose your spot in your social circle in your community. Yes, that is still very valid. It's a concern. But the extra sensory ability that I want to back up and look at is the very deep, uh, almost like it's attached to the reptilian brain in some ways where it's almost subconscious. And I really want to look at being in touch with your subconscious mind or even unconscious mind a little more. Part of that, exercising that is remembering your dreams in the morning, by the way, and journaling them just as a side note. Um, and some people call it like a vibe or the hairs on the back of their neck standing up. There's different ways people kind of perceive this physically or mentally, emotionally. Um, it also kind of depends on, you know, if you've ever been in a traumatized situation before and you may be a little hyper alert now because of past trauma. So that is something you have to figure in too. But this reaction takes less preparation um, or mental chatter to produce. And it oftentimes is met with the opposite mental social reaction when the surrounding of social, like the, the socially perceived safety um, is in place, such as I'm sure it's fine. I don't have a reason to be reacting this way. You start to have all of these little conversations in the back of your head. Um, so this opposite of what you're feeling starts coming into your mind where you start to say, I'm fine, you know, because you're starting to feel this really deep anxiety. And we've been taught to say things like, or I'm sure, you know, I'm just being paranoid. So. It's strange how most of us have been trained to discount this deeper, more accurate and very needed gut instinct for social reasons. Okay, so I believe this training originated from the people who led masses and taught them to discount their gut reactions to control them. And these anti-instinct social cues were passed down through generations, unfortunately, um, in schools, churches, religions and workplaces and ultimately homes and families. Um, so you think about who would most benefit from teaching the concept of ignoring your innate and most primal pr protective instincts? Stop and think about this. Who originally may have taught your ancestors or those people in your community to ignore their gut instinct? Okay, that is really dangerous. We need this gut instinct. So it would be a predator. A predator wants you to ignore your gut instinct or the part of you that tells you that for your safety, you need to be on alert because something's wrong. This could be in a relationship. This could be when you're going on a hike or for a run. It could be when you're in a dark parking lot or an alleyway and you're just trying to get to your car. Okay, these are, these are when you can be, you can be prey for a predator and you can also be a target for those who are very selfish and self-centered or have no empathy. So um, controllers, manipulators, sociopaths, narcissists, psychopaths, these are the ones, these are the types of personalities and people who are the very low, like small percentage of society that want to control the masses. And what they do is they, they have prepped people for centuries to ignore their gut instinct, to not listen to themselves or the people who have their best interests at heart. They want you to be a target. They want to control you. 
They do not want to see you have a voice of your own. They do not want you to have this block lifted off of your gut instinct to survive and to be in the higher up, to be above them, to be able to control your own environment rather than them control you. Okay, so acknowledging and identifying this initial social training is key to beginning to learn to use your abilities accurately. Okay, because there's no point in trying to practice using something before changing or releasing a, a block put in place to doubt your instinct or to ignore it in the first place. Okay, so we really have to work on our blocks and why we haven't been using our innate natural human extrasensory abilities. I know that some people would even beg to differ. They shouldn't be called extrasensory abilities. I just call them that because that's what registers with most people as psychic abilities or these powers. These were originally born and innate in all human beings, and they were blocked because of social conditioning. Okay, so it's really important that you unblock this stuff so that you can understand what, okay, first of all, understand why it was put there in the first place. And the first step to using your extrasensory abilities is to identify the blocks on them first and where the blocks came from. So you need to be prepared. We all need to be prepared. Um, these abilities are needed with, with like all we will be experiencing in the upcoming weeks and months with the inauguration, with things that are going to be happening in the media, with things that are going to be happening in um, our communities and everything else. So we need to be able to identify what we are feeling, what we need in the moment, what our family needs. We need to go with our gut instincts. Don't discount it as, oh, I'm probably being paranoid or I'm jumping to conclusions. You know, psychic is such a generic word for it at times because there are all these great abilities. There are, there are upwards of 12 abilities that people can possess and do possess naturally that can you can utilize on your own. So when we're talking about a gut instinct, we are talking about when you um, are walking you know, in that dark parking lot and you get a gun instinct that something's wrong, there's a threat in your environment, how would you know where to look? How would you know what direction it's coming from if this is just your imagination? I mean, it's very science-based. We humans are very, very prone to um, really tuning into these vibes naturally. This is who we are. This is how we operate. And it's important that we do not discount that because this is what we're going to need to go on in the next few weeks, in the next months. We're having a pandemic. We are definitely needing our abilities, um, whatever those may be, to function, to protect ourselves and our families, to get our own divine revelation. Praying is good for that. Meditation, taking good care of our bodies. Let's oust the alcohol, you guys. We don't need more alcohol right now. <laughs> we don't need any mind-altering drugs right now. This is the time to be present. This is the time to be completely aware, to be conscious, and to be in the present moment. So um, it's good to re realize and recognize that. I have to come back to my screen. And, you know, it's important that we all just keep in mind that our extrasensory abilities are there for our own good, for our survival, to warn us, to prepare us, that we all need to really focus on and really, you know, include our children when we're, when we're learning and teaching about, our, you know, about ourselves and our own abilities, that we are not discounting messages we get. This includes dreams. This includes that thought that somebody's, you know, popping up in the back of your mind when you're driving in the car, coming home from work or the grocery store, um, waking up in the middle of the night, really just understanding that you need to start listening to yourself and voicing it. And just because you tell one person about it doesn't mean that they even know about the topic. Bouncing it off of and mirroring what you're getting um, with as many people as you possibly can is going to help you to get a hit on whatever revelation you're getting. It will come up. Okay. 
just yesterday, um, I got word from somebody close to me who is in law enforcement that somebody was at a store with a gun. Okay, so it wasn't on the news. There wasn't like a public announcement or anything. And I, I texted, I think, four people who could live in the area and might be going. And the first two that I texted were on their way to the store and turned around or didn't go there. And so, you know, it's, it's, it could be that, you know, I was going to text seven people. Um, and like, let's say I text the first two and they're like, oh, I'm not even near there. And, and then I go, oh, you know, I, I wasn't correct. Well, keep going, bounce it off the right person and see where you get the hit. Where is it that you're um, meaning to direct that energy and that message? So um, I'm just about out of time, but I wanted to thank you so much for watching. Please contact me if you'd like coaching on your extrasensory abilities. If you would like a reading, a medium reading, let me know. I'm at AnnaOlsonIntuitive.com. And you can also reach me on Facebook at Anna Olson Intuitive. Best case scenario would be my website, AnnaOlsonIntuitive.com, A-N-N-A-O-L-S-E-N. And I'm also on Instagram at tiny medium queendom and i'll be doing some lives this week i can't wait to see you there and i hope you have a wonderful week and i will see you next tuesday